So love activated compassion, which compelled him to move in the in a spiritual gift, yeah. which which caused the healing in someone else's body. And but the love of God is not a human love. Right. And so that's that's what we can trust in. You know, when we misbehave, um, we think our our first idea is to run from God. You know, because He doesn't want to be in our presence. But that's not true. That's when He wants us to run to Him because He loves us. We're wanting to build a life of faith. I think we have to first put faith in the love of God. And as we put faith and confidence in the love of God and getting to know Him, I believe it will cause every other area of our lives to, to flourish. Well, welcome to another episode of Winning Conversations, and this is our first Friday of June, and we're so glad that you connected with us, and Winning Conversations is all about depositing the Word of God, depositing Mm -hmm. testimonies, depositing stories um, that will take us and cause us to go to another level, and this is what Heritage of Faith is all about. It's about being equipped with the things and the tools that will cause us to win. So Amen. Eric and Nikki and, and Pastor Annette, we're so glad we can connect with you once again. And we believe every time we get together, we believe that just God shows up in the midst of these Amen. conversations. Amen. So we just want winning to- conversations. Winning conversations. Winning conversations. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're excited about this. And, and today we're gonna, we're gonna talk about faith and we're gonna talk about love and and we may go into this uh for july as well um, but i want to just really quote our key scripture for our church which is found in first john chapter 5 4 but but i have to quote verse 1 as well it says whosoever believes that jesus is the christ is born of god yeah and then verse 4 says and whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith and faith yeah. is a spiritual force yeah. that p- will propel your life. It will take you from where you are now to where God wants you to be. Faith is is such a, a key to our walk in life. Yeah. And just the things that we've learned from Dr. Savell that, you know, faith isn't a movement. Faith isn't a fad. Faith isn't really a message. It's how we live our lives. Right. right. So tell us a little bit about faith in your in your uh, in your perspective of what faith is all about. You know, that's how Doctor Savell lived a life <laughs> yeah. of faith, and uh, he just trusted God and believed, and he taught people all over the world to be winners yeah. uh, in life through through faith. Yeah. And but also, he was a man of great love. Oh, and, for sure. And compassion. I mean, yeah, the way sure. he was so kind. Uh, the way he treated people and the man of humility. Yeah. And so I don't think you can really talk about faith without talking about love. And so those two are definitely connected. Yeah. Um, you know, the Bible says that faith works by love. Yeah. Right. And if, I mean, if you work it back, you know, we all know Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God, Yeah. but we also know God is love. That's it. So then it's have faith in love. Yeah. Right. Everything he tells us in his word is for our benefit. It's because he loves us so much yeah. as evidenced in the gift of Jesus that wow. he gave us. Amen. Yeah. Cause yeah, you said, believe in Jesus. If we believe in Jesus and what he did for us, that was love. Right. He laid down his life. There's no greater love than that. Exactly. So yeah. if you believe in Jesus, you can't separate love from what he did for us, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, I went back and just listening to Dr. Savell's messages and reading his books and the first message which was October 8th of 2000, the first message <laughs> he preached mm-hmm. was honoring your heritage of faith. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, you look through Hebrews chapter 11, mm. and you look through that. It was, yes, faith, we can consider it like a tool. We can consider it something like, but it's, it's so much more than that because mm-hmm. if you look at the people that, that had faith and walked in faith, It wasn't just, and Abel had faith, and Mm -hmm. Enoch had faith, or by faith they did this, or by faith that did they did this. It all came back to they walked with God. Yes, you know, and I think there's there's sometimes people we have an idea that we're going to operate in this great faith (laughs) and not walk with God. Yeah. Well, First Corinthians thirteen says that you can have faith to move mountain. That's it. But if you don't have love, you know, in other words, if you're not walking with God, if, if you're not operating in love, right. you know, because you could, 
you know, there's a lot of people, especially today, they're they're seeking gifts, and that's not a bad thing. You know, the Bible says that we're to desire spiritual gifts, but what it says before that is pursue love. So you go through all of 1 Corinthians 13, and it talks about what love is, what love is not. And to me, uh, Dr. Savell was the epitome of love, of what love was, you know. And, um, and well, that's what Jesus said, I came to show you the Father. Or you could say, "I I came to show you what love is. And so when that when you get through all of First Corinthians thirteen, it says the greatest of these is love. love. And then you turn the chapter to fourteen, it says, So pursue love. <laughs> <laughs> and desire spiritual gifts. And desire gifts. spiritual yeah. gifts because if your pursuit is love, and then what happens is it's okay if I take I'm like going right now. <laughs> <laughs> So it said that in several passages that Jesus was moved with compassion. Amen. Yeah. Right? And it, when you look that up in the Greek, it, it says, having been moved with compassion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So love was operating in him, the love of God. He yeah. says, I only do what I, you know, see. What I see the Father. I only mm-hmm. say yeah. what I hear. So the love of God was operating in him. The love of God activated compassion when it talks about that word compassion, it's like it's like it moved from inside him, in his inner parts, yeah. Yeah. where he was compelled, right. yeah, right. you know, that I've got to I've got to do something here, and and so, like one instance, they said, um, "Have compassion or have mercy on us," and what can I do for you? And and uh, it says he was moved with compassion and yeah. touched their eyes. Mm-hmm. So love. Activated compassion, which compelled him to move in the in a spiritual gift, yeah. which which caused the healing in someone else's body. Right? So good, yeah. So oh, so there was a progression, but it started with love. Yeah. Right? Amen. You know, I, oh. I just think that's that's awesome. I yeah. mean, I remember one time being in Russia, and and uh, I think we were doing a youth service, mm. and uh, a girl had come to the service, and. Uh, I was kind of standing to the side, you know, Eric had ministered and he was ministering and I was kind of standing to the side and, and she came up and wanted prayer for a friend of hers who was in the hospital, I think that day. And they didn't know what was wrong with her. And I, they, they thought she was going to die. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. So Eric asked me to come over and pray. And I mean, I was like, I was standing to the side. I was good over there. You know, <laughs> you're, you're ministering you pray, <laughs> you know? And so it wasn't like the special anointing I had to pray. It wasn't like thou shalt pray, you know? It's I just walked over in obedience to him yeah. asking me to do it. And when I laid my hands on her, I just started praying. And I started out by saying, Lord, I thank you that you love her. Wow. And when I said that, wow. the love of God, like the compassion of God rose up in me. Mm. And I don't remember a thing I said, I didn't even really remember what I had done, but he told me later that I had like prayed, like I had gone from her head all the the way to her feet, you know, and just spoke over her. They didn't expect this girl to live. Right. Wow. So, you know, and just prayed for her out of the love, like love just came on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day or two days later, something we had the Sunday service and um, this girl came back and told us how that night they had released the girl and there was they couldn't find anything wrong with her. Thank Praise you, God, Praise you know, Lord. and it's the love of God, of yeah. course, that works the gifts of the Spirit, like Amen. miracles and healings, that's because it. that's who our God is. But of also, course, He wants he us well. But also, mm-hmm. that girl loved her friend enough. Oh yes, you know, to she was compelled, or you know, had compassion to to stand in that's it. Yeah. Yeah. for her friend to have you know faith for her friend. That's right. it. So her love activated her faith. And there's like no distance in the spirit. Like, you know what I mean? The love of the the power of God went in a hospital room. I wasn't even in. Praise the Lord. That's so cool. You know, that's the power of the love of God that compels us for people. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just amazing. It's the power of love. Yeah, It shows up. God Um, shows up. I think a lot of times we, we put our faith and I, I think I don't, without trying to clarify this or say too much about this, a lot of times when it comes to faith, we often too often put our faith in an outcome. Of course, we're believing. Abraham, it said he saw, I, he saw Isaac raised in an image. Mm-hmm. You know, so he saw he saw an end result. But ultimately, he saw he saw the provider. You know, we were listening this morning uh, of, of a message of Doctor Savell's from 2015, mm-hmm. and he was telling a story and talking about Abraham. 
and said, Abraham's the one that said God will provide. God didn't say that. Mm-hmm. Abraham's right. the one that released his faith in the provider. Right. He's the one that called that, hey, Isaac, he said, me and the, ba- me and the lad will return. Mm-hmm. Said, because God's he, a covenant God. He's right. yeah. going to do it. So yeah. many people think mm-hmm. of supernatural provision as like simply finances. Mm-hmm. But that was like an, an offering, a mm-hmm. sacrifice. That's right. You know, and it's provision for anything. That's He'll it. provide supernatural provision. But like going back to that story, you know, there's a certain amount of consecration that happens in your life when you're obedient to the love of God. That's like, right. I didn't really want to pray for that girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was like my consecration to say, I'll do, Lord, I'll do it. Amen. You know, the girl came. I prayed. And God did what he can only do. That's it. You know, and as, it, as we just consecrate to the love of God and just do what he's asking us to do. Amen. Yeah. You know, and like, like the story of Abraham. Mm. You, you're saying he said God will provide, but he was willing to do exactly. what God asked him to do. And right. then the God of provision right. came through for him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amazing. Amen. And that made mm. a way for all of us to Jesus. That's it. You know, That's later it. for God to give his son. That's right. Because it's covenant. Yeah. That's so good. So good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Love and then God. Jesus said, all the, all the law and all the prophets are summed up in these two things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love God. Yeah. Mm. Love others. Yeah. So love is all about others. And, and so when you talk about that in 1 Corinthians 13, it says it doesn't, love doesn't seek its own. Yeah, that's right. And so it like goes that, to motive. It, right. It goes to motives of our heart. I think so many times with faith, it's we, we concentrate on faith to get what we want. Exactly. But love doesn't seek its own. Never. You know what I mean? And so that motive, like, you know, and then you turn to, oh, you can probably tell me the reference. I probably have it written down somewhere. But, you know, Paul said, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. So that means following the law or not. That's yeah. it. It's faith working through love. Right. That's exactly The motive it. of love, right. you know, Always. is what matters. It's the motive of the heart. It's why you're doing what you're doing. It's, it's did God say. Yeah. Right. You know, if God said it, then you can believe it. Amen. You know, and that's where faith comes from, hearing the word. Yeah. You know? Hallelujah. And hearing you know, what love says. we're definitely living in the days where love is, is it's very selfish. It's all oh, yeah. about me. You know, people don't, they're, they don't have an idea of what real love is. And it says in the last days that people will know that we are followers of Christ yeah. because of our love. Yeah. And we also know that it's, it's been prophesied that in the last days, there'll be greater things, greater miracles. Why? Because we're going to love like God loves. If we yeah. can get that revelation to love others the way God loves us, then we open the door for God's power to, to manifest. In a greater way, it yeah. says big time. That's yeah. what Oral Roberts said. He was talking to, to Dr. Savell, and he said, no, those the things that happen in those tent meetings and those revivals are nothing compared to what it's going to be like. They're coming yes. back big time. Yes. And I've been praying about that, and God showed me it's because of our love. There's power in my love. When we love others, he shows up. It's that compassion. And you know, even Peter said that. It's the... It's, it's the goodness of God that brought me to repentance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, right. it wasn't, it, it was just his, his goodness because yeah. he loved me. Right. Because he it, loved me. That goes back to pursue love. Let's just That's all it. get on the same page to pursue yeah. love. And it's like, I think you said at the last women's meeting, provoke one another yes. to love. Mm-hmm. To like, love. let's goad each other into yeah. loving. <laughs> yeah. No matter what we do, like remind each other. To love. To because God love. shows up. God's yeah, there. Yeah, he shows up. So if, they, if, if they'll know us, you know, by our love for one another, but yet they see us arguing, yeah. disputing, Silly. competing. No. Yeah. No. You know, uh, trying to gain positioning. Yeah. Yeah. And those kinds of things, then why would they want to take part of that? Exactly. You know? Because we, we all experience the love of God. Right. You know, through our time with God or through someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That showed Always. us the love of God. Right. You know, if we all went back and told our story, there's someone that there's showed someone. us God's love. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And that's and and that's what builds faith and confidence in our lives. You know, like you had said a little bit ago, it's have faith in God. Yeah. Have faith in love. Th- those are that's that's what we, and and it's too often it's like we want to have faith for this right when we should be having faith mm. in oh my him. goodness yeah that's faith love. in him and how I said it you know, the Lord gave me an illustration of of a glass uh, a, a glass container and that is glass 
this, you know, I would say this is glass. This yeah. is glass. But if I take a hammer or I drop it and I shatter it, it doesn't change. It's still, it's still glass. And that's how we need to see God. God is love. But, you know, if I break God down into pieces like he's provider, that's still, still love. love. Yeah. He's, he's a healer. healer. That's still provider. Because, yeah. He is Jehovah Sidkenu. He is righteousness. But it's yeah. still love. Yes. He is my shepherd. But mm-hmm. it's still love. So, so when we have talking about having faith in God, and we even look at God's names, all His redemptive names for our things relating on how He wanted to relate to man. So when I build that upon that foundation, so a lot of times we're trying to build these this house of faith, but we have no foundation. Right. right. We're trying to we're trying to release faith. We're trying to see see greater things happen in our life, and we a lot of times do it without a foundation. I was, you know, trying to speak to mountains, but I didn't even know because that's what I heard someone <laughs> yeah. say. Right. But I didn't know the God of love. Right. Yeah. Right. I didn't know the God of love. You know, you could have the scripture and quote it all day long. God that's shall it. supply all that's my it. needs according to riches and glory by yeah. Christ Jesus. But when I understand God is love, love. Love supplies. So love easier. wants supplies. your needs met. Yes, Always. that's just just like love wants that mountain out of the, out of the way. Amen. You know, right. just like we love our yeah. kids. Yeah, we want the best for our kids. We don't want them to experience lack or Never. sickness right. or or disease or you know we don't even want them to get hurt. Right. To yeah. teach them a lesson. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. we don't. You know? And so that's that's really all the promises of God. Uh, that we can cling to. That's, That's why it. he gives us those. Is This is the kind of life. This is the love I have for you. Why I sent Jesus to die on the cross, to rise from the dead, so that you can have all the promises of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, you could experience the fullness of, you know, of God, of yeah. his love. That's yeah. I remember a message work. you preached, Pastor, about um, that, you know, the God, God executes righteousness, which in the end you could say love works what's right in people's lives it makes things right he makes things right and so it's bodies or finances or relationships and then when you when you understand that god wants to make everything in your life right and you put faith Mm. in that then the word you know you can put you can put everything right in your life by this word that's why we say winning by the word you know it's our faith in this that's going to cause us to win in life and so if we will just trust him that what he says in here is going to cause us to win and we we mold our life That's to right. how he mm-hmm. says mm-hmm. because he loves us and he's trying to make everything in our lives right then it's easy to be corrected yeah. you know or it should be yeah. because we trust in love it's have faith in love That's he's it. making things right and this is the way this is the way to the, to the life you really want amen right. well somebody amen. might say well how do i know my motives are right you know i think that shows humility when when someone mm-hmm. says when someone says I just want to make sure I have the right motives and intents, what well, says in Hebrews four that the word uh, divides the soul and the spirit, and mm-hmm. and that's you true. can see the intents of the heart through the, through God's word, right. and so that's the connection. I think what you're talking about the foundation mm-hmm. that uh, that we base our faith on, you know, yeah. is, is the word. That's I remember having, and love. A, having a Bible school instructor, and she. Um, one of my favorite teachers that we had, you know, at in Bible school, and she would talk about this issue of growing your faith, building your faith, and people would come to her all the time. And it's like, you know, how do I get more faith? I need more faith. I need more right. faith. I need more faith. I need more faith. Right. I need more faith. And and she goes, you don't need more faith. You need a greater revelation of the love of God. Right. Wow. Yeah. Because because if my understanding of the love of God is here, then that's all my faith can operate in. Right. But when my, my revelation of the love of God is here, then my faith can operate at this level. Amen. Because Amen. faith is confidence. It's trust. That's it. But, it, but it's like, it, it, but it's still based on the character of the person that wrote the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So that's how faith comes. Yeah. But, but how, do, how is faith coming? I'm getting to know him through the word. Yeah. I'm getting to know the covenant. I'm getting to know his promises. I'm getting to know how he operates. I'm getting to know how he created things. I'm getting to know why he created things. I get to know the fact that he loved me. That's it. And it's the same as in in a relationship. The more I know you, the more I can trust everything that you say. Right. 
That's it. Yeah. If I if I have an intimate relationship with you and I know all about you, then I trust in that love that you have for me and everything you say is mm-hmm. true. I can I can trust it. Yeah. That's the same thing. That's what you're saying is yeah. we've got to have an intimate relationship with love. No love. Yeah. Yeah, before yeah. we can trust everything he says. And then our faith will work. Yeah. Right. It yeah. works every single time because that's what it says. Faith works by love. If you don't know his love, your faith is not going to work. Yeah. No matter how many times you say it and quote it and declare it and decree it, you've got to know love. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think, then, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that that love that we're talking about is not, there's a couple of types. Of, there's actually three types of love. Right. But the, we're talking about agape, yeah. the love of God. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the perfect kind of love. Yeah. And, you know, there might be people that are watching that maybe they, you've never experienced uh, human love in a way that maybe some of us have. Right. You know, maybe you grew up in a rough home. Maybe your parents didn't know how to love. And, but the love of God is not a human love. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's what we can trust in. The love of God, because it's not it's not based on a human, you know, uh, based on your experience with other humans. That's exactly right. You know, and so as Christians, we want to show the love of God as humans, you know, (laughs) and let the love of God come out in us so that people that have never seen the love of God can understand who God is through us. So good. So good. I think that brings us like to Romans 8. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we talked about this a little bit before we started, but Romans eight thirty two. you know, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely, freely give, give us, us all things? things. All if things. you can get to know this God who gave his son for you, <laughs> this God of love that loves you Amen. that much, right. what would he not give you if he was willing to give you that, if it would be for your good, you know? That's it. Yeah. And that's our God. He's yeah. just, I wrote down a definition of agape since you were talking about that, that I love. And it said, an undefeatable benevolence. Undefeatable. No matter what you do, (laughs) it's going to be benevolent. That's good. Love never fails. Unconquerable goodwill that always seeks, always seeks the highest good of the other person, no matter what he does. Of the other person. Of the other person. He's always thinking about us. Always thinking about us. Love God, love others. He's always thinking about (laughs) us. Always. Always. Oh Everything he says and does is, is for our benefit. Amen. It's for our good. It's for our good. And there's good. nothing we can do that will ever defeat that. He will always be that for yeah. us. Yeah. No matter yeah. what. Yeah. And, it. yeah it's yeah. not compared to human. I mean, love. And, and we do. You know, we tend yes. to grow up and we see our fathers or our mothers. And when we're introduced to God's love, that's our concept. And I remember going through a really difficult time. And, you know, when your children misbehave, we tell them, go to your room. (laughs) Go to your room. Just go to your room. (laughs) And so your idea of that is I've been bad, so I I get punished. I I get punished. (laughs) I'm punishment, you know, not to be in their presence. And so that's our concept of God. And so when we, you know, when we misbehave, um, we think our, our first idea is to run from God you know, because he doesn't want to be in our presence, but that's not true. That's right. when he wants us to run to him yeah. because he loves us yes. there. And when I heard this as a young child, that there is nothing I can do that can make God love me any less. And there's nothing I can do that can make God love me anymore. That was freedom. Yeah, it was like, right. wow, so good. Yeah. Yeah. it's unconditional. It's like nothing I can do really, <laughs> yeah. because, you know, we grew up like, if you do this, this, and this, then you get this. And if you don't do it, then you don't, you know, yeah, yeah. Right. it was conditional. I mean, we so. even have that verse that it's the love of God that disciplines us. Yes. Yeah. It's it's because he wants to point out, look, yes. that didn't help you. Right. Yeah. So I, I need you to notice that that's not helping you. Yeah. Yeah. Like time out, you know, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. didn't help you, you know. And so it's the love of God, that the Bible says. that. Yeah, but if you weren't us. disciplined that way at home, you don't yes. understand that. Yes. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah, right. Maybe, maybe yeah. we should no longer use the word punishment. Maybe we should use the word protection. Yeah. You know, train. Yeah, training. <laughs> Teaching. He didn't want you to do that again. Yeah, exactly. You know, because he loves you so much, and whatever that that you just did, it caused hurt in your own life. Amen. And he yeah. doesn't want you to hurt. Which right. he can heal that, but then he's going to give you wisdom so that you never don't have to deal with that again. So it, yeah, you, so you don't have to do that again. Go through it again. Yeah, you know, I was thinking of a story, and because it has to do with God's redemption, it has to do with God's forgiveness, and it even leads us into one of the most popular scriptures, John three sixteen, 
but before John three sixteen, of course, it's John fifteen, <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> the Bible. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and so John three oh, fifteen, and so oh, okay. it says, you know, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, mm-hmm. even must the Son of Man be lifted up. But yet, if we know that story. It's, it was telling Moses because the people were being bitten by serpents. It kind of looks like humanity. But yet Moses lifted up this bronze serpent, mm-hmm. and it said everyone that looked at it would be healed. Mm-hmm. Even though they were, they were missing the mark and they were, they were going and trying to serve other gods and, and going after things into perversion, yet God still provided a way in the wilderness, mm-hmm. and all they had to do. See, their aspect of looking was their faith. But what were they looking at? They were looking at the love of God on that pole, mm-hmm. and I think that's that's where you be. If you're wanting to build, a, if if we're wanting to build a life of faith, I think we have to first put faith in the love of God. Amen. And as we put faith and confidence in the love of God and getting to know Him, I believe it will cause every other area of our lives to to flourish. Amen. Yeah, amen. Having faith amen. in the love of God. Mm-hmm. And I'll close with this thought: when the the scripture is Galatians 5, 6, it says, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, meaning it doesn't, it doesn't produce, it, it's not what's produces. Right. So it's not, it's not your outward, it's not our outward um, demonstrations of our faith towards God. Right. Because that's what circumcision was. Right. It was, it was a, an inward thing that, that, that they did, but the understanding is, but what, it, what does produce? Faith works by love. Faith worketh by love. And that word worketh is where we get our word energy, power, right? The, um, the ability to produce activity. So when faith works by love, so when love is connected to my faith, my faith now has, has energy. Amen. But if I don't have love, my faith will not have energy to produce. Amen. So that's right. That's good. Wow. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. Some good stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh, Wow. Uh, Eric, why don't you uh, pray over our audience today? Yeah. Father, we just lift up everyone to you today that's that's uh, watched this podcast, Father. And just, Lord, I thank you, Father, that they will experience your love, that they will know your love, that the peace of God and the love of God comes on you right now, and the anointing of God, the presence of God fills your car, fills your house, fills yes. your workplace, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're doing right now, listen to this. We pray that you'll experience God's love, and that and that love of God will fill your heart, that you'll know that you're loved, that you'll know the sacrifice that that God provided through Jesus. We pray that for you, and I and I pray by the by the love of God that every hurt, every emotional hurt that's been hurt by people that haven't shown God's love, I pray that 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 you'll experience that healing today, and that you'll be able to uh, let go of some things and be able to forgive people. And we thank you for it. And if you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus, you've never invited Jesus in your heart, or maybe you're living a life that you're not, you, know, you shouldn't be living right now. You know, it's easy to come back to God. Just, just go to Him and say, "Lord, I believe in you. Please forgive me of my sins. I, I make you Lord of my life today, and I want to live for you." And if you do that, you've never done that before. But if you do that, if you say, "Jesus, live in my heart today." Make him Lord of your life. You come into the family of God, and, and uh, you're, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to be uh, experiencing the love of God for all of eternity. And that's our prayer for you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, once, so once again, we want to thank you for joining us today. And, and if you don't have a home church and you're connecting with us and you live in the Fort Worth area, we would love for you to con- uh, connect with us this Sunday. And I'm telling you, there's great things happening here at Heritage. And we want you to know that this church is a place that will love you as a place where you'll experience God. You'll be equipped with the word and you'll be able to go out and influence the world around you. We love you. Have a great day. And don't forget, go give him Jesus. Jesus.